Ciao everyone, this is Esther. Alfred here. Of you, me, and Sicily, welcome to our channel. Or if you're new around here, welcome to you, me, and Sicily, where we come to you every week to talk to you about things, all things Sicilian. And we also travel around Sicily and bring you videos from all over the place. Now, this question has been asked for us all the time. Where exactly are we located? We are right outside of the city of Catania in a town called Achicatena, not far from Achitraza. And this is our home. We're broadcasting to you from our home. And today we're gonna to talk to you a little bit about higher education, specifically universities in Sicily. And there's three state universities, Alfred, right? University of Palermo, University of Messina, and the one we're gonna focus on, University of Catania. What a great school, huh? You know, everybody talks about Harvard, <clears throat> And everybody talks about Yale, and everybody talks about Princeton and all these other schools in the states, these yeah. Ivy League schools. When all those schools were a glint in their puppy's eye, the University of Catania was operational. Long this school before. goes back to the year 1444, Esther. It's 857 years old. Stop and think about that for a minute. Imagine the overdue library books, how much <laughs> the fee is, right? <laughs> Stop and think about that. But it's a magnificent school. It's the largest university in uh, Sicily, for sure. Mm -hmm. It's number 13 in all of Italy, for sure. And it has- 29th in the world. 20, 20 oldest? 29th oh in the world. God. And it has, listen to this, 66,000 points of light. Those That's are. how many students it has. 66,000. I bet you didn't know that. I didn't know that. Did you? That's a, it's a great university. And, it's a great university. And we have a lot of friends that have graduated from the University of Catania and other schools, and all of them had had an incredible, incredible experience going to the university. And mainly because, you know, it's a little bit different here. Um, the university functions a little bit differently. They have, first they have the three year and a two year, three years sort of like a graduate, right? A, a then you have another two years, which is a master's and then you get the big doctorate. But what was interesting, um, we met a doctor yesterday, right, Alfred, when you got your last shot and he said that he went to the University of Catania, became a doctor just this year and boom, got a job. They have seven, Which is unusual. They have 17 different uh, degree programs, different mm -hmm. different things. Uh, they have a tremendous uh, medical school. Yes. They have a tremendous law school. Uh, they have a tremendous pharmacy school, humanity school, language school, computer school. Business school. Business school. And they have even two suburban campuses. One of them is in Ragusa. I believe it's architecture. Yeah. Am I correct? Yeah. And the other one is in Setacusa. I believe it's uh, agriculture, something like engineering. Now, engineering. Alfred, what's the story? Because, you know, there was already a law and medicine and philosophy taught in Palermo in the 1490s. But tell the story about why the University of Catania uh, was the first one to be established in Sicily. Okay. It goes back to uh, the king. What was that guy's name? Alfonso the, the fifth. fifth. Look, the fifth. <laughs> what this guy did, he was kind of like a jamoke, if you know what a jamoke is. He's kind of like a jamoke. He switched the capital of Sicily from Catania to Palermo. Yeah. That's how Palermo got to be the capital. It used to be in Catania. So evidently, he got the case of the guilties. Mm -hmm. So a couple of years later, in order to, in order to uh, you know, kind of make up for it, he authorized a... Uh, a school mm -hmm. to be uh, to be you know founded so to speak in in yeah. Catania. Now it wasn't unusual for schools uh, to be founded. For example, the University of Bologna was started in the early 11th century. I believe it was 1082. Imagine that 1082 University of Bologna was started. It's the oldest university, one of the oldest in the world, as a matter of fact, but it's the oldest. Uh, one of the oldest in Europe, for sure. The Naples came next um, around 1200. Yep, and you had Padua, you had uh, 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 
uh, Torino, uh, you had uh, a couple others. I can't think of them right off the top of my head. But the point is that what I'm trying to make is, is the students, like in Bologna, they actually hired the profs to teach them. Yeah. So basically the whole idea of university was founded by uh, intellectually curious students uh, who wanted to learn. Yeah, but like yeah. I said, over in Palermo, already in the 1400s, medicine and law was being taught. Also Probably. Jesuits yeah. were teaching uh, philosophy, sort of higher education, but it wasn't in the university setting that we do know now. Now back to the University uh, of Catania yeah. for a second. Uh, so, you know, it's so exciting to always talk about Sicily and first and things like that. Um, in the University of Catania, yeah. the old Benedictine monastery, which by the way, is one of the oldest and largest in Europe, believe it or not. Uh, next to it is um, the Chiesa di San Nicolo le Elene, which is now open to the public. And the monastery, believe it or not, has been converted into the humanities department for the University of Catania. And I got to go there one time and it is incredible. Like I said, it's one of the largest in Europe and you walk in and there are students, there are classes in the places the monks used to sleep, the monks used to work. Then, I mean, it is a beautiful, beautiful uh, building. And then you go downstairs and it, there is one of the largest libraries in all of Sicily. And let me tell you, this is a treasure. You go downstairs, I was there. And you go downstairs and it's built inside of caves on top of old Roman ruins. So oh you walk gosh. in and the library is not just modern library, they have old books, they have old newspapers for dating back, you know, from a long time ago. Uh, so it's it's really like a museum and you walk around and there's also mosaics and there's a section where the monks used to uh, cook Alfred, the ancient, they retained some of those ancient structures. So the students are basically studying and learning and researching in the midst of thousands of years old history. It is uh, one of the most fantastic uh, finds. And you know where it is, Al? It is parallel to Mount Etna. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful to, to okay. Via Etna. Okay. It's, yeah, it's a parallel. So if you guys know where the Piazza Duomo is, uh, that is, by the way, next to Piazza Università, which was the first location of the university. That's right. That's right. Uh, which is now the seat of the university. It's still right there. The whole area around Piazza Duomo, the law school, is on one side. When you when you go down, when you go to visit Catania. Uh, you need to go into the law school and, and see it. It's just a it's it's a great place. But people don't usually equate Catania with higher education. Yeah. They don't. They can they what they do is they uh, equate it with C D, the C D underbelly of, of Sicily. When in reality, like I said to you, there are sixty six thousand students in seventeen major disciplines. And to get a degree from the University of Catania it's not that easy. It's not, you know, show up and 2-0 and let's go. You have to pass a very rigorous oral examination in front of three professors. Yeah. Can you imagine that? That's how they give the exam. Very few exams are written. They have several written, but the vast majority of exams are what they call oral recitation, mm -hmm. going back centuries, in front of three learned scholars, professors. It's fascinating. Who quiz these students on whatever subject it is. Now, here's, here's what a difference, you have to get a passing grade of 30. Uh, uh, 30 is the passing grade, 27 out of 30 or 24 out of 30 is good. But if you get a bad mark, say for example, you freeze up, and I'll tell you a story about that in just a couple of seconds. And if you freeze up, you have the right to ask for a retest you can take a retest. Well, yeah. the way it also works, Alfred, is that they have those exams three times a year. So March and April, June and July, yeah. August and September. If you fail, you have another chance to take it. But the interesting thing is that they fail all three times that the tests are being given. They still can't still move on to right. the They have to, to retake the next that, year. that program. No, they don't have to retake the program. They can move on to the even they, if they get even a, even if the but that whole part about the oral is very interesting, and you know our friend uh, Marta, who is a guide over in Anna, she went to 
the Corey University in Enna, which by the way is a private, so not it's not yeah. one of those states like Messina, Catania, and Palermo. She had a fantastic experience. Uh, she uh, graduated in marketing and journalism. She's now one of our favorite guides. Her English is perfect. Um, and she had also another great experience because the classes at this university were so small. There were 30 students in her class. Imagine 30 students in the class of journalism and marketing, and they're still all friends. So, but in fact, everyone we've talked to, Alfred, from Juliana and uh, Gianmarco, who went to, um, excuse me, Juliana and Stefania, who went to University of Catania, Gianmarco, who went to the University of, Cor of um, Enna and Corey, they all had a really great experience. But, and let me just say a big but, what? unfortunately, and we talk about this here all the time, that this you know, these guys, these treasures, what points of life, points of which, light, which, you, which yep. you so well put it, are now leaving and having to go up north to get a job. My friend Elizabetha just left last week. She's the graduate of University of Catania. She had to go to Milan for work because there's no work here. She said she had <clears throat> to do it. She had to do it. When I was the general manager, uh, two years ago, when I was the general manager of the Elephants Catania, uh, American football team. Mm -hmm. I had a I had a great time for a year and a half getting that organization kind of like going. Right now it's it's undefeated by the way in Division Three. Very proud of those guys. One of my ball players, the quarterback, was just graduating from medical school. Imagine that? Yeah. Quarterback, okay? From the University of Catania. But the other guy that I'm most proud of, even more prouder than him, and there are Plenty of other success stories that played football on the elephants from the University of Catania was a uh, Nigerian immigrant. Yeah. Okay, a Nigerian immigrant, a Christian Nigerian immigrant who emigrated here with his family uh, to escape the persecution uh, in Nigeria in the section that is occupied by the Islamic terrorists or whatever they're called. And he graduated from the School of Pharmacy. And I remember he sent me pictures or I saw pictures of his graduation. And I saw the look of complete joy and pride in his family's face as their son. Could yeah. you imagine that? Right? Comes Beautiful. to Sicily. Comes to Sicily to get a better life. And he's now a pharmacist. And he's my we're still very good friends. He's my Facebook friend. I just saw him. He bought his first new car last week. Imagine that. He's been, so cool. yeah, he's been out for That's two so years. Cool. And we know lawyers, many lawyers, my, my, my law partner Massimo, who I consider to be one of the best lawyers in Sicily, he's a graduate of the University of Catania's law school. That's right. right. But, you know, the whole thing is that Sicily is producing these beautiful, intelligent people. And I have to tell you that education here is really taken seriously. I mean, the kids, you know, the, all, my, uh, fam all my friends' kids, they study like crazy. You know, you say family first, then food in Sicily, but education, right, is up there and it's important. You're not going to find any idiots to go to spring break like you do <laughs> in the United States. There's no States fraternities or so. And see drunken young 18 and 19 year old men and women or boys and girls or whatever some. it is that they're called nowadays <laughs> acting, you know. Pretty, well, there are some in Catania. We've we've they, seen some. The vast majority of students, in my view, okay, because they come from very tightly controlled homes, okay, with typically wonderful parents, they're beautifully uh, behaved yes. as a general rule, and it's very common for them to say, "I couldn't go to practice last because night, coach, because I had an exam I had to study for." Uh, Okay. I mean, I never heard that in the States. And I coach collegiate football and I coach other sports uh, in the United States. So I never right. once had one kid. You're so right. Right? I'm Can it's I crazy, give yeah. one more fact and then let's say hello to uh, people. Guess where, where the first Jesuit university was established? First Jesuit. University of Messina was the first Jesuit in the world. Now that University of Messina had a horrid up and down, but 
we'll go into history it. has a history in, it, we'll history go into very... it a little bit later let's say hello to yeah. some people okay child ross salmoni Hi, helen ross. is here Hi, helen. how are you peter scapoletti dr rosemary oh i'm going to talk about dr Ro let me say something about dr rosemary. right now i'm so happy and proud that Dr. Rosemary with the University of Florida is trying to partner up with the University of Anacore uh, in some kind of a medical uh, exchange program. Super, super, super. How do those two get connected? They met, uh, Dr. Rosemary was here. She contacted us. Remember we had a, a phone show? call from, wow. yep, we had a phone call wow. with her and I connected her wow. to Marta, who is one of our uh, favorite guides who went to the University of Anacore and she talked to her professors. Dr. Rosemary talked to the dean at the university and bada bing, bada boom. I'm very excited. Um, so you want to know how you can help Sicily? These are great ways to help Sicily. Michelle, no, and I think Jude, that's a great story. That, that our little program uh, kind uh, get of get your get your get your facilitated our little John Ricci. Oh, wait, oh, I have wait. to get my bell. Ow, ow, ow. Way too loud. To get the bell. Way too loud. Woo. Way too loud. You're going to okay, okay. way too loud. <laughs> Marta is here. <laughs> Good to see you, Marta. Manny Hi, Marta. is here. Uh, thank you, Maria. Became a new member wait, wait, as well. Wait, no, no, I'll no, no, no. You, you've done it five times. <laughs> Anthony, how are you both? Okay. Um, Canadian, uh, Charlie says, please do some more village tours. I like seeing how the old buildings look. Yeah, right. we're about ready to go on one next week. We're going we're to go, go to next Santo week. Actually. Oh, this is great. Tal Thomas, Stefania is running while she's listening to us. I love that. Very, very cool. <laughs> that woman, she just kills me. She sent me a picture yesterday of something mm -hmm. of what she was making. I felt like getting in the what car with you. I can't remember what it was. It looked it's always like, something delicious. It looked like it looked like I don't know what some beautiful dish made with rice and pasta sauce and stuff. And then her second picture was an ironing board <laughs> with a husband's shirt on it. Oh my god! Because <laughs> this is what I'm doing while I'm cooking and I'm uh, I'm uh, uh, ironing my husband's clothes. What's Mama Cookie? is here we connected through esther's heart of gold my pleasure absolutely 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 uh, helen thank you one thing i love about your chats they are never a waste of time thank you it helen. is our our pleasure okay well that's kind uh, of 2001 key. to 1434 587 still a very good school we got your math What's that? Your, you said 800 your math was a little i bit had off. the listen i'm dyslectic okay I you mean, are I, yeah, you know, <laughs> did, you, did you ever hear the joke about the uh, uh, the dyslectic? Uh, how the hell does a joke go? I can't All right, think about that yet. joke. <laughs> we'll go back. All right, I want to know where everyone is watching from today. Um, did you ever hear the joke? Oh, about you got the, it. Yeah, the dyslectic agnostic. No. He spent the whole day wondering if there was a dog. I don't get it. He's dyslectic, so he inverts the numbers. Oh, good one. Okay. Agnostic, agnostic, right? God, dog. Oh, it's a good okay, joke. that was a good one. Uh, Marta, who's here, and Stefania, who's here, who went to universities. You're right. um, universities here. I want to know what else uh, you guys want to add from what we talked about the university system here. I do. I have what, one more thing. Go ahead. I asked Stefania <clears throat> when I was prepping for the show, you know, I, I some of my my friends, I sent a message to, I said, you know, I knew that she graduated from the University of Catania. What was your most pleasurable, favorite moment at the University of Catania? And she said, Rosar, Professor Rosario Ferracci, who happens to be a very good friend. I said, why? She said, he, he was the best teacher I ever had That's in incredible. my life. Could you imagine that? And this woman graduated maybe 20 years ago, I'd say, right, from university? Probably. Probably 20 like years ago. And I just thought that that kind of blew me away. Saro, yeah. Saro Faraci is, he's a, he really is a living legend in academia around these parts over here. He was on our programming. At yeah, time, I was just going to say, we have him on yeah. one of our live chats, and that was a very interesting chat. He talked about um, innovation and business startups here in Sicily and talked about some of the challenges. So I'll leave you a link. 
when we're done here, I'll leave you a link in the show notes that you can go to and watch that. He's a very intelligent man. And you know, we, we did that uh, video with him uh, in Achireale for the Festival of Granita. That's it, no, he's we just a great guy. He lives wife. over here in Zephyrana della Etna. And right now he's building an addition to his house. So every day I get, I got a kick out of him with, you know, he's the guy that taught me the old seven in one rule for workers. <laughs> <laughs> for every seven people, one of them is working. I thought it was hilarious. I ordered all your books out for looking forward to yes, them. Anthony, on this I, 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 <laughs> so I got the order and I, Anthony, I process it. When I get home, it'll be shipped. Okay. Oh, Maria is from Nietzsche, France. Where are you from originally? Uh, Maria, wow. let us know. That is very I cool. wanted to tell a little story about a woman that I knew uh, one summer when I was hanging out with uh, Roberto up in Jardini Knoxes. Yes. Yeah. And I got to be friendly with a lot, a different subset of people up there. And I met up with this woman who ended up being a good pal of mine. She was also one of my guides. She was a, in her last year at the University of Catania Medical School, fourth year yeah. uh, medical school. Right? And she was always forever studying, okay? So she was really nervous about her last test that she had to take. And, uh, you know, Roberto told me that this woman was like, you know, top of the class, this and that. So... A couple of days went by and I bumped into her and I said, well, how did you do? She says, I didn't do very well. I says, how come? She said, uh, I got in front of the three professors. Remember I told you there were three professors yeah. and I froze. I couldn't remember one thing. So they get to make me take the, take the test yeah. again next month. So about a month later, she came in with a book and I remember it was on blood and it was in English. Okay blood uh, problems with the blood, right? And she recited for me about 15 pages, 15 pages, all virtually word for word. I was following her on. Oh I, was like, I was like, oh He's my God, right? Hard. Oh my God. And then, a, and then the last story I'll tell, Massimo says this isn't a true story. <laughs> this is a funny story. But I'll tell it anyways, because you know, I'm a lawyer, and <laughs> when my lips are moving, sometimes they lie. I don't know. But the legend has it where the elephant is, uh, you know, in Duomo Square, there's a big, beautiful element, uh, uh, elephant over there that is like, I think it's the most viewed attraction, isn't it? One of All right. And in the back of the elephant, legend has it that when the law school students used to graduate in the 40s or 50s or 60s, they would march <clears throat> with all pomp and circumstance <laughs> uh, to the elephant, to the back of the elephant, where there'd be a ladder, and they would they would climb up the uh, the ladder, and they would kiss the scrotum of the elephant, the balls <laughs> of the elephant, because allegedly it was going to be to make good luck, right? So I remember we were shooting a video down there one time. Remember Massimo? No, you kept asking Massimo. I said, Massimo, did you hear No, I did not. No, I did not. Alfred, stop it. No, I did not. It was hilarious. You they know, ended like, up, someone ended up, a, a bunch of people ended up complaining <laughs> about that being a sexist That's thing. A good this story, goes back honey. years That's ago, a good right? Story. And I don't I don't know if it's true or not, but I just love to tell the story. It's a great it's funny. story. Um, uh. Maria says, I was born in UK. My parents were from Chinchana, Cernan uh. D'Angelo. Maria, we did an entire episode on Chinchana. If you go to our playlist, called Explore Sicily. Uh, we did Chinchana. Uh, watching from Tampa, Florida. Ciao, Sue Willard. It's good to see you, Sue. But when we're yeah. done over here, make sure you scroll to the beginning because we had some fun facts about the university system. Sue, can in, I say something Wait a about second. We had some fun facts about the university system and also about the University of Catania. But I want to say, ask you guys if you have any more questions because we've got some uh, Sicilian people here. Oh, she watched the Chanchana show. Uh, ah. Sicilian people here who went to these universities. Yes, Alfred. Uh, what I was going to say is about the the one thing that they don't have that they do in American schools is they don't have the big collegiate uh, collegiate sporting programs that they do like, you know, football or basketball at the 1A schools with the big hundreds of thousands of people. Right. Sports are controlled by an organization called CUS, uh, which is a separate state run entity. And they, they control the quote unquote sports. Okay. But the sports that they do here in Sicily, they like, for example, there's no American football, just to give you a quick example. 
But things like volleyball. Wait a sec, not in schools, but there are private clubs. Collegiately, I'm talking about collegiately. collegiately. There's like, there's no University of Palermo versus Catania yeah. in football or for Thanksgiving or anything like that. <laughs> and, but the uh, water sports here are very big, obviously, okay? Uh, and cycling. All, cycling is huge. Um, volleyball and basketball, where I got my shot yesterday in Archie Ache, Ache the Sportivo. When I walked in there, I had remembered that about eight, nine years ago, I had been there. I went to go see the Cirque du Soleil. The, Cirque du Soleil. Yeah, the, the, the circus. And, and our I, friend Daniel plays basketball there. Right. And I said to, I said to, uh, to Esther, I said, this is where Daniel must play basketball. Yeah. It was a beautiful auditorium. I mean, ginormous. I bet you it probably held maybe seven, 8,000 people. Yeah. Right? And it was clean as a whistle. Although the outside, the next door is the soccer, the soccer stadium, which is big, but it's a little bit long in the tooth. Someone ought to go and paint it up. Uh, but, you know, that's a town of like 50 or 60,000. Considerable actually, town. Yeah. Uh, Marta is, also says, I also answer Alfred's question. The most memorable moment at Core University was the relationship with my teachers. Many of them have been life teachers for that's me. That's great, And she, says, she also said that she keeps in touch with them still. I would never forget their lessons. I had teachers coming from all over Italy at Core University and taught me not only the subject, but so many experiences. And I grew a lot thanks to them. That is so beautiful. Can I ask Martha one question? Yeah. Martha, what is CORE, what does it stand for? That's I asked, a good question. I asked Esther, is it an abbreviation for something? That's is it a good somebody's question. name? I would appreciate it. Uh, what's Mama cooking for us? I would love it, you guys to talk about the Sicilian project. I've watched Al's interviews and watched Al's interviews, and it's fascinating how it got started. An incredible story. And make sure you watch Esther's interview, Al. I'll leave you a comment on that, um, which, by the way, this goes really um, interestingly with what we talked about, right? Because um, they do have language, our friend Juliana. Spanish, Arabic, and English was her major. And her English is pretty good. Marta's English is fantastic. Stefania's English, some of our people. But it is very unfortunate that English is a second language here. Uh, they're not teaching it as much. That's why there's such a need for outside people, like the Sicilian Project and Alfred's Big Heart. When did you start that? I, I interviewed you in 2014, and I think that was year four. Is that possible? Yeah. I think here's what happened, okay? In my second book that I wrote called Gaetano's Trunk, uh, which maybe was I wrote nine years ago, something like that, mm -hmm. I did a, a, a whimsical chapter that if I had a million dollars, what would I do if I had a million dollars? And the answer was I would, uh, I would start English-speaking schools uh, in Sicily because the – teaching of English is, was under, still is under terrific attack in terms of um, budgetary constraints. School systems have to cut out really something that may be a little bit extra. Not that they don't have teachers willing to teach, but just the budgetary reason. That's exactly. one of the programs that got knocked out. And also uh, the general teaching in the hinterlands, which is the inner, so to speak, when it gets out of the city, uh, was pretty bad. It's, uh, it's still it's still pretty bad. I mean, basically, those teachers they can they can hardly speak English. They can uh, they they may be able to read it and they may be able to write it, but conversational English, forget about it. So I had said, well, you know, if I had a million bucks, I'm going to do some schooling and open some English schools. So if, after I read uh, after I published a book a few months later, a guy by the name of Stephen Carboni from Montpelier, Vermont, okay? He called me up and he told me a story that his grandfather had immigrated to the United States uh, from a small town in the province of Messina. And the opportunities presented himself, he did very well. And Stephen did very well. He owned a bunch of Car, I think it was car agencies mm -hmm. or something like that. He says, you said that chapter really touched me. So I'm going to send you uh, a little donation to help you get going. <laughs> so I was like, I, I remember I was at my law office, right? And I had my phone. I says, great. I'm going to get a hundred bucks. What the hell am I going to do with it? Right. So about a week later, the FedEx 
package came in and it was a ten thousand dollar check ten thousand dollars right this is oh crap so i had a i had a you know incorporated as a nonprofit in the commonwealth of massachusetts i put together with over the next year or so a really terrific board of directors with some sisophiles that really love sicily including Gaetano Cipolla, who's still on board, uh, Giovanni Lanza, who's still on board, uh, Joe Montecolono, who's still on board, uh, Celia Romano, uh, John Owens. Yeah. I've, we've had great people uh, who have kind of like steered the ship. You know, we take turns. I'm now the chairman of the board, and the day-to-day -day operations is really is our Giovanni Lanza, who has a, the two dual roles of president and treasurer. And Al, I've been so proud, you know, since um, coming here to Sicily that you put me on the board and I've been so proud yeah, yeah. of the work that we've been doing, educating hundreds of Sicilians free of charge to them. Stefania's uh, kids were there and it's really just conversation. We don't do any grammar and the kids love it because what we're really doing is just planting a seed so they fall that, in love. That's all you can do is plant with, a seed. So they fall yeah. in love with the language of um, English. But the most important is how appreciative the parents are. You know, so right now we, you know, we had to stop a little bit with the classes. We, there's, the we, we had one, we had one in Kanikati that was halfway through. So we, we turned, we evolved a little bit. And right now our fundraising has been to give to, um, shelters and also, um, you know, churches that give out food. We we did uh, help um, donate a church in Anna, and I can't remember the name of it. Marta. Marta helped Catania, us with that. Yes, exactly. one in Catania, yeah. one in Bagheria. Yeah. Uh, so it's been such an honor, and it's honestly thanks to people like you guys. It's called the Sicilian Project. Uh, dot com. And now we're working with the Acciaioli um, battered. Uh, well, so which we, we, right now we've been trying to raise money. Well, first of all, we're going to get back into the academic component. Yeah. As soon as it gets in back into the white zone, which I heard is, is soon, a, yeah, soon, and maybe by the fall when classes resume, we'll we can we can resume having classes for the kids. We ran a beautiful program for years up in Brolo uh, with a wonderful yeah. teacher there. Uh, that's a, up in the northern uh, section of the uh, uh, province of Messina. And she's got a, she had a, every, every class was like 30, 35 kids. She did a wonderful job. We've had classes all over the People place. People love it. Even in Catania. We all right, let's, let me get through some of these. Cori was a Greek name of goddess Demeter's daughter. It means girl. And they decided to call Enna University Cori to pay homage to the goddess. I love that everything around here is myths and legends. That is so great, Martha. Thank, Thank you, you, Martha. I and also never, never an idea that. of spring of rebirth of the growing phase of the cycle of life. Thank you, Martha. That's that very, very, very interesting. Cool. Uh, they also call husband Tom and sometimes just Guy. 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 Yeah. Okay. Uh, and Maria Kanikati is where her roots are from. Very My grandmother cool. was born there. My grandmother, Augustine, is. Uh, Thanks, West Fred. We're hmm? That's right. That's right. Uh, we did an entire episode, right, on, um, on Kanikati, where. We did bread and wine. We featured a bread and wine place. Where okay. was that? Kanikati. Kanikati. We, we went. We went with Frank, uh, Frank, Frank Cornelio's Familia. family. Great family. And we featured the bread place, and then we went to a vineyard. And Kelly, are there any disc golf courses? There are golf courses, and in fact, we. Um, What's a disc? I'm not sure what a disc golf course is, but there uh, is an 18 hole really uh, near us, well, 45 minutes away from Joseph, us. Joseph, what does disc mean? I'm confused. Is that 40, like a computer? No, I computer think you probably missed one. Um, there is one. What? what was it outside outside of Lingua Glossa? It's a beautiful 18 hole, and they also have hotel it's rooms beautiful, there. Beautiful, they beautiful, They have a place, restaurants yeah. there. So yes, there are. To answer your questions, there are golf courses. There's also one down in uh, Donna Fugata down south, that by Ragusa, I believe it is, right? Yes, that's right. There's another one. Uh, no one spoke too. English when I was growing up in the 60s and 70s. Do so they speak Sicilian, I'm guessing? Uh, yeah. Gaetano is an old-fashioned name, my husband's name. Oh, Gaetano is his name? People used to think it meant Tom. It doesn't mean Tom. Uh, wait a sec. Thomas says, I'm Gaetano. My parents Americanize it to yeah, Thomas but that's actually, or Tom. Actually, Gaetano is not 
Tommaso is Thomas in yeah. Italian, not Gaetano. My grandfather, his name was Gaetano, and everybody thought it was Tom, and they named their kids Tom. <laughs> but really, Gaetano would be Guy uh -huh. in English. And for some reason, I don't know how it got switched, Gaetano, or, you know, I don't know, Tom. Uh, Joseph says disc golf is playing with frisbees. It is very popular uh, in North. They're not, not that popular I'm here. Wait a or, there probably I'm is, but I don't know. I'm sure. Wait Rachel. a minute. Excuse mm -hmm. me. Yes. I happen to know for a fact that the football teams, the Elephants Catania football team, and all the young kids, they play that frisbee game on the beaches in the summertime, but not in, not so much in the wintertime. So right now, if we went to the playa, uh, one of the and you know we walked over there. We would see frisbee games going on and, and volleyball as well. Yeah, volleyball, volleyball, volleyball as well too. Uh, Tony says we spoke Sicilian at Tony home did. as well. Uh, Ross says the Sicilian project is a fantastic idea. The I, I donated the other Thank day. You, Ross. Thank you. The whole of Italy needs the program like this. I went a few times to my son's English classes as well. Thank you, Ross. I appreciate. Peter it. says we had great called, teachers. Okay. We had great teachers. Okay, I, that's a new thing. I learned something new on all of these chats. That's why I love these chats. Right? I have something new to teach wait, you. But wait a sec. Let's just keep going. Hi, guys. We'll be in Sicily next week, and we'll be celebrating our anniversary. Do you have any places, a dinner, have a recognition for a place for dinner in Palermo? Karen, there are a few. Message me. Uh, let me see. Probably you can email me. My email is attached to this YouTube channel, or you can reach me on Facebook. Uh, or on our You, Me, and Sicily Facebook. Are you staying you, in me, Palermo itself? In Sicily. That's a, well, I'll, I'll probably ask her that. Yeah. But before we go on, I want to make an announcement. We have an announcement. An announcement that our English, English, our Italian courses for beginners and intermediate conversations will be kicking off soon. And we decided to charge $4.99 a class of for 45 minutes. I'm going to be doing it with uh, Stefania and basically you'll get a private link and you can join in live or watch it after. But the point is to give you a little bit of Italian. And really it's not just when you come here and you know, simple phrases that you should know when coming here, but really uh, fun phrases that you can uh, learn if you're trying to learn Italian. So with that said, I want to leave my email in again, the description of this um, show. So when we're done here, I'll leave it over there, or you can reach me on Facebook. May I ask so, a couple questions about that that they yes. may have? How many times a month will you be doing going live? Twice. Twice we're a month. We're going to do it twice, and we're <clears throat> looking for Fridays and possibly one Saturday. But if they can't make it, can they watch it yes. several times? So they when they get the link, they can go link on it. They're on, on, on your yeah. leisure. And right? that's that's a really good thing, by the way, you guys. So I've been doing online Italian classes. Not only do I have a, a actual teacher, but I have a lot of YouTube videos that I like and I follow. And one of the things that I do is that I do watch them over and over and over again. You know, um, one of my teachers has a private link and she does also the same type of thing. And it, it's just been really helpful for me because repetition, right? Yep. Repetition is the key uh, to everything. You just have to keep listening to this and then uh, talking about the so. That is a really exciting thing. And also we're going to put a link and some information on youmeandsicily.com. You know, Ashley, we should tell a new. There's a lot of new people over here. It's kind of funny on this Wednesday uh, Wednesday group. We're getting a different crowd than we do on Sundays. Right? Yeah, but for those who don't know, we also go live 4 p.m. Sicily time on Sunday. So that's a good point, honey. Yeah, but what I was going to say is, you know, we have this private group that she was alluding to, and you can see the it says join. Uh, on am I correct in yeah. saying that? And what that is, we do we post private stuff uh, to people. Uh, few times a week essentially what is a dollar and 99 cents a month basically what a cup of coffee is and it helps us defer some of the expenses of this program it's a small over way here. to support us it's a, yeah to support us and also we give away we're going to be giving away a lot of stuff uh and we do a lot of different types of video over there so you ought to join that we're almost up to 75 we just started this about a month ago and we'd like to get up to a few hundred people if we get to a few hundred people which we should be able to do within a year, then the then Yumi and Sicily would be a self-sustaining 
entity, which is what we want to do. We want to do more video. Yeah. We want to do well, more we also, stuff, you know, just stuff. Yeah. I mean, also with our ancestral homes that if you guys don't know, we have these ancestral home uh, series where we can travel to yeah. other places around Sicily and feature them. Uh, disco golf is when you wear really funky clothes on the course. I Tony would love that. <laughs> Tony loves my hat. I so anyway, uh, wait a second. Uh, we'll do and yes, we'll be staying in Palermo. Perfect. No, uh, Tony Thanks, loves Tony. your hat. And Tony, you see this hat? I'm going to show it to you. It's made out of paper. I've had it for eight years. It cost me like a hundred bucks. The guy who sold it to me says, no, 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 it's a great hat. It's going to last you forever. And damned it if it's, <laughs> I looked at it. It's, Let me see. Where was it says it's made paper. It is 100% paper, but it's made in the, you know, C-H-I-N-A. Oh, the C-H-I-N-A company? <laughs> the C-H-I-N-A company. It's like one of those, uh, it's one of those hats I had to get right away for uh, a photo shoot. I got one in black and one in white. And out of, I have like 35 hats. Am I right? I have a ton of hats. He is. Uh, he's it's my favorite hat. With hats. He's yeah. And he's got great hats. Yeah. Uh, Will the classes be held in Italian or, or would there be Anthony? Great question. So uh, the classes will be held in Italian, but for sure, we'll do some Sicilian in there as well, if you, that's interesting. But it's not going to be because just Italian, okay? No, Because you're going to be there too, right? Well, right. So I'm going to be asking Stefania. We're going to be doing it together. Yeah, I'm going to be Italian, speaking English, right. and she's going to be speaking Italian, and we will for sure have some Sicilian. We had a lot of fun in one of the chats where we talked about some Sicilian dialects, some of, some of our favorite Sicilian, and by, <laughs> by far still my favorite. Stefania, I believe, was brought up in a Sicilian, uh, in, in a household that spoke dialect. And, you know, I remember one time I had a big argument with a good pal of mine from Ragusa who said that nobody speaks uh, Sicilian anymore. And I wanted of course, to pop him they in do. the head. Of like, course they do. Of course they do. Of course, many people. As a matter many fact, people. Last, yesterday, the guys, our neighbors next door were moving in. It was like eight guys, right? These big, tough guys, right? They're all speaking Sicilian. No, one of them was speaking Italian. Yeah. No, one of them was speaking Italian. Was and cool. even, even you know, our friends, the fruit and vegetable places, Nino, Angela, when they, they talk, when they, yeah. when they're talking to each other, it's they just talk. Okay, I want to give you, I want to give you a hypothetical, and I want to know what how you would re react to this. Could I just give you? A yeah. Point? Okay. This morning I had to run an errand. Well, Esther was Esther teaches um her little friends kids some English. She does it once a week because she loves them. They like her family. So she goes off and I just decided I'm going to go and I had to buy some stuff at a hardware store. Okay. So I'm, I'm in line and in front of me about two feet away or three feet away is this guy. He's got a mask on. All right. So what the guy does is he took his mask and he, he, he pushed it down here off his face and he started to cough. And then he put his mask back on. So I looked at him and I said, the guy's an idiot. That's why you have a mask in my mind. I'm saying this and I said, to protect, right? So about five minutes later, what did he do? He pushes it down and he coughs again. Except this time he coughs it. He coughs towards the cashier or I'm about ready to walk, right? So now the steam's coming out of my ear. So now, and then 30 seconds later, he pulls it down again and he coughs. So I says, hey. So now I'm a little bit irritated about this. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of like pretty sternly, I guess you could say, well, very sternly. I told a guy, keep the damn thing on your face. That's what the purpose of a mask is. Well, it's a law here. But let's just be clear that in Italy, it is still the law. You have to wear one. Well, I'm not. Okay. If this is a little bit, here's, what's the purpose of the mask? It's a prevent your germs from getting on somebody else or, Am to, I correct? or to protect yourself like i mean i was so ir I, I came back i was like man that guy's stupid and he looked at me and he gave me the classic sasean response after i you know scolded him he went you ever see those sasean guys who go like that uh, Mata says, many people in Sicily speak Sicilian language at home and also with friends, good wives. I love speaking Sicilian language. Yes. It's part of a uh, Sicilian. It's right. I, and Never it's forget sound, that, and I love Mata. That. Never and forget that. that. Never forget that. That's for sure. Okay. All right. On that note, um, you want to talk a little bit? Are we getting at? Is mm -hmm. it, is well, the, what do you want to talk about? 
What, so I'm just showing you that right now we have an eruption going on in Etna. Etna has been flipping out. How's the video, you guys? How's the video right now? Let me know in the comments. Um, I'm just getting a little bit of a warning here that our internet is so so. So leave me a comment here, yep. uh, and let me know how the video is. I I don't think I've ever seen. It. Don't don't go switching mm -hmm. you. I don't think I've ever seen it sustained with the uh, with the activity right yeah, now. It's tough. I think it's good. Uh, for Edna to blow her top, but I can't remember in 20 years it being this sustained for this long. It's yeah. been crazy. Um, Alfred, even though our restrictions have lifted, when we did have the restrictions, there were people who did the same thing. Isn't that you dumb, know, it's Karen? just so crazy, right? It's crazy. I used to, you know, this is what I do um, videos in and out. Okay, here's what we're going to do, you guys. Stand by, don't go anywhere. We're going to uh, try to switch it to another. We are going to, let me see here. Mine, nope, you? you're can't. not not yours. Okay, mm -hmm. we can't. Okay. All right, let's go a few more minutes. Uh, yes, Al, you're right. Some people need to put the mask on when they are sex. I Can agree. I say something to Julia, please? Okay. 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 Everyone's saying that we're a little bit blurry, so here's what we're going to do. Nope. We're not going to. So why don't you address that? Uh, Julia, I just got your, mess, your message for some reason. And what we the best thing to do is to schedule a, uh, a, a telecon with me. Oh, so it we passed. Can talk. Yep, Helen, it did. Does it look good now, you guys? Crazy. I think like every time, like every right time now. Every time there's an eruption, you yeah, got the you warning got a brief went thing. away. The okay. warning went away. The, uh, they actually had to uh, close two of the uh, runways at the Katani Airport uh, yesterday. And a lot of the, the right, a lot of the flights got disrupted uh, because of the the way the uh, the ash is blowing yeah. from my left to your right because Etna is literally right behind our house. You know what, what this has brought up? Such an interesting thing. So the Etna has been incredibly unusual. I have never seen yeah. it like this it, since I came here first, 2014. Yeah, and everyone is saying that it's highly unusual, and it's presented a very interesting. Uh, conundrum for cities and towns because when if she blows there are there's like a layer of ashes that you have to pick up like like almost like snow like a little bit of ashes that you, and some of it is really gritty, thick very gritty and very gritty and very and very thick so some one of the conundrums that has come up is for the cities in the center uh for the towns uh who is going to pay for the cleanup who's responsible for the cleanup where are they going to put this rash there's a big um argument going on in trecastani about which department where the money's going to come from um you know so this is, is just etna has posed another interesting issue um so that's been very interesting but the you know in february in March, we had her blowing like every 36 hours. It was fascinating. Some of the footage from some of our friends up closer, it looks like she was crying red tears. So that is a- It's um, not a danger to us. I don't want you to get alarmed because yeah. the top of Aetna has blown off. It blew off centuries ago. These are all side vents from the side of uh, all the way around, relieving pressure, okay? Yeah. And the lava that flows from Etna is what they call, it's a very slow roll uh, lava. In other words, it's not like, you know, the type that you saw in that movie Volcano where people are running down the street and it was getting exactly. overblown by this. It's not like that at all. And fortunately, there's a beautiful valley up there called the Valley of the Bova, Bova. where uh, the vast majority of the lava flows into. It's like a gigantic canyon. So, but to look at it, Right, it's just it's beautiful, breathtaking. But I'll tell you what: last couple of weeks between the pollen around here, yeah, I know the pollen around here was in, in for about two weeks. It's just horrendous, coupled with uh, the lava in the air or the ash in the, the air. Right, I was like, you know, the other problem it that it that tough. has that has posed that this it, it can't be doing any good to all the crops, right? this heavy ash. In fact, I got a, a head of lettuce the other day and I cut it open. It was like filled with lava. I had to like triple, not lava, excuse me, of ashes and I had to like triple wash it. So that's not too good. Um, even though the ashes act as a fertilizer, uh, certainly the farmers here are very thankful for Etna and her fertilization. 
heavy fallings like this cannot can I, be a can good thing. Can I tell my, my Monet and the Lava story? Wait a second. Uh, the video is much clearer. Thank God. Okay. okay. Well, I made it to a live program. Nice to see you. Catherine Marino. Wait, let me just read a couple yeah, yeah. of these. Uh, I think during those times they would require masks because of lung damage. Uh, let me know when you're available, Julia. Great. I'm going to I'm gonna wear my mask. When I go to the States to visit my family, I'm so conditioned to wearing my mask. <laughs> I'm like, I heard that at the piece of ash. Thomas, that Tom, was funny. Tommy. You know Al, Al, that, that sounds that's like an I Alfred was... Zappla joke. That's an Alfred Zappler. That's goat. something I would say. Okay. Let me. Can I tell? Okay. We're gonna. We're gonna. I'm gonna tell this lava story. You don't have to watch me tell it. You could just listen to me. But it's a true story. Okay. Back in uh, 2001 and 2002, she really blew badly, and she went down from uh, all the way down, almost to Nicolosi. Okay. So about a week later, my friend Sarah and I took a ride up there to see exactly how bad it was. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it was very bad. Yeah. Okay. So we're right at the where the lava stopped, okay? Like on the road, okay, stopped, right? So Sarah approaches it, and I said to him, hey, you idiot, don't go on the lava. It's still, there's probably mold and lava underneath it. He goes, no, 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 this is okay, this is okay, like he was an authority, like a volcanist, volcano guy. So he takes three steps, and all of a sudden, the rubber on the bottom of his shoes starts, oh my God. starts to smoke. Oh, right? my God. He was about eight feet in, right? That guy broad jumped eight feet <laughs> to get out of it, right? I couldn't believe it, right? That that's, that's Yeah, that is very dangerous. And last what I what, what, A few years ago, there were some wait a journalists. Last, wait a second. Yeah. A few years ago, there were some journalists from, I believe, the BBC, and she was erupting. And they were warned not to go up there, remember? Yeah, right. And uh, there was some rain happening that day, and so uh, the lava crystallized and it hit them in the face, and a bunch of them got right. um, injured. That's Before right. we go on, I just want to tell people that we do have an entire episode talking about the history of Mount Etna, and that's also under exploring <clears throat> Sicily in the playlist or culture. But again, I'll leave you a comment to that video as I well. just wanted to say one more thing. Last week, I saw a video of this guy up on Etna. Listen to this. He was cooking hot dogs on the lava flow. As it was coming down, he had found the big rock. And he got a stick, and he put his hot dogs on the stick. <laughs> and they cooked. They, they cooked. I was like, oh, my God, these guys are but idiots. But listen, the other, you know, that's, a, that's, a really, like that. that's a really, really good point because, uh, you know, Etna has some danger, but she is also a great place to go horseback riding, uh, indigenous plants and flowers that you can only find oh at God. Etna. Did you know a mushrooms, scene? Mushrooms, excuse me. Porcini did you mushrooms. know a, a scene from the Star Wars was filmed on Mount Etna? How's that for a little bit of a factoid for you? Wow. Uh, plus, you plus, can really dance. Uh, he's been doing. He's been like, he's yeah. been singing this song for two weeks. Wow, you can be. Can I finish now? Thank yeah. you. So they're skiing on Etna, and not just snow skiing. You can also ski because some of her ashes are so fine. There's actually skiing all the time. Uh, there's a bike uh, event that happens that goes all the way up Etna. So there's a lot of activities. And in fact, on we have a, a tour guide, uh, Paolo, who does uh, – cave touring. Yep. I mean, there's a lot of fun stuff. So we, while we may talk about her, you know, blowing her top, da, 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 Etna is a great place. No, I just worry about, let me tell you what I worry about with Etna, okay? I worry about the uh, breathing. <laughs> it's all yeah. I worry about, you yeah. know, because I, I know, you know, studying Vesuvius, studying Stromboli and these places over here, you've got to watch out even for these side vents, you know, to respect the freaking, excuse my language, volcano. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to go up there. I would never take my clients up there when it's erupting. Of you know? course not. I draw the line. I say, yeah, you want to go someplace else. Good to see else. our friend Jody DeLuca. Ciao, mio amico. <coughs> Jody. Uh, listen, Jody, if you, when we're done here, make sure you watch the first 10, 15 minutes. If you're interested about uh, the university system here in Sicily, we talk vastly about, well, not vastly. We sort of brushed a 
uh, brushed a uh, painted with a broad painted with, stroke. with a broad stroke. Thank, Thank you, you Alfred. Uh, good, I have stroke. some <laughs> photos somewhere of the house is covered in the lava on the way. Yeah, there are some places. Yeah, uh, that Nicolosi were from Refugee like Sapienza. We, you go in the back row right there. Nicolosi, you see one there, yeah. But like we said before, it's a slow moving um, lava. A lava yeah. So you get plenty of warning. And what happens is people don't heed the warning. So what happens? Something you know what you know what's not slow slow moving? What happened in Messina? The University of Messina, right back in the Earth, beginning the of earthquake. The, the earthquake, it wiped out almost three quarters of the faculty. Remember what the University of Messina? I think 14, like 12, 14 or 12, 12 were, 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 were killed. Yeah. Out of 34 were yeah, killed. Yeah, earthquakes are real things here. Between earthquakes up there and Allied bombing up there, Messina, those from Messina, I have to really bow my head. And you talk about people that have gotten up off the ground. Well, you talk about this whole area, Alfred, when there was yeah, an earthquake, right. there was Jeez, a lava. I mean, you look at Catania, for instance, it had earthquakes, it had uh, Mount Etna eruptions, and it rebuilt time yep. and time yep. again, which shows you the Sicilian resilience, right, of never giving up. I heard Etna, real threat to the structures, unstable, and someday, listen, I've read those articles too. Uh, I have spoken to some people, um, including our guide, who says if you know it's if that happens, it'll happen in hundreds of years. Hundreds? You mean thousands and thousands of well, years? Well, I'm not just gonna happen now. Uh, the battle between I haven't paid my credit cards off. It can't happen yet. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, regarding mass freedom was sacrificed. Those who expect the reap of benefits of freedom must, like men, undergo the fatigues of supporting it. That's really well Joe, you sad. want to know something? The battle between Obi Wan and Onikan Skywalker. Cool. Uh, oh my God. Are you leaving His already? His name was Aratio, Sean, and it, it's the singing. We didn't call him Obi Wan, we call him Arats. Okay. <laughs> 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 That's good. Oh That's funny my stuff. God. What are uh, you doing tomorrow, Bunny? We have any plans for tomorrow? Well, uh, oh yes, I'm more. I'm want to publish the cherry video pretty soon. Oh, we're going to publish the cherry. And video then soon. in the so next week or so, we're going to go to Santo Stefano the Camasta because that's one of our ancestral home it's videos. Film. We're doing some video. We're work. doing some video work. Uh, just uh, publish the province of Messina, if you're interested in that, that's also on our playlist. And I think you said you were gonna put up the schedule for our December Christmas tour. We have the schedule for the uh, October, wow, we're doing October, October, October December. Stuff. Wow, you can. We can really, do. you know what, what I'm talking about? <laughs> if you go on to uh, TikTok, right, which is a stupid thing to go on, but I like to go on to TikTok and I like to watch these things called Reels, R-E-E-L-S, where the kids, I like to keep up with the kids because I'm like a cool guy. So they take a song, 15 seconds, and then they do a dance to it. And one of the songs was an old song that was in the 80s called, Wow, You Can Really Dance. It was one of those avant-garde songs. It's hilarious. So I've been, every time, it's stuck in my head now. Tom yeah. Catone has really good sense of humor. Famous Tom? Sicilian Jedi, Obi-Wan Cannoli. Obi-Wan Cannoli. <laughs> Come on. I love that. You got it, brother. Uh, Jody says, do you have a tour in September? Yes, we do have no, a private don't. tour. Excuse oh, me. We do have tour, no. not an open tour. I do have a private tour, but we are open to doing tours, private tours, group tours. Uh, maybe you have a family. Maybe you have a group of friends coming here. We'd love to organize a tour for you. And we also do some tour consulting, right? Or you can read about it. If you can't come. You oh, how can you read about how can you read about Sicily? About? Oh, I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alfred's books, which are great, by the way. Uh, where can they find them? Let oh, me do it for you. Go ahead, please. Thank Alfred you know. Alfred's com. <laughs> it's going to Oh, my God. So Alfred, funny. come on. What are you drinking? We forgot to talk about what you're drinking. Today, I'm drinking San Pellegrino Quinoto. Zero. No sugar. And what is quinoto? Quino? Quinoto Actually, is that, a, that was in quinoa, is a sweetheart. Sicilian quinoto. Yeah, you see orange. That? It's like a bitter, a bitter. All right. And this is the third bottle I bought, eighty nine cents, and I'm getting addicted to it, especially with um, whiskey. Okay, Jameson's whiskey or Johnny Walker. It's a great summer drink. Vat sixty nine. 
Thank you, Peter Schiappoletti. Uh, I would love to come to Sicily at Christmas. I'll wait to see how September goes with my holiday. Can you that bring some so tomatoes with you in your socks? Peter Schiappoletti? He's, he's legendary with his tomatoes. Um, we're talking about Fred McNeil. Oh, I brought a beautiful Fred, you can bring a piece set. of mutton. It took can't you? six big squatting. men to get. Oh, isn't that stuff really great? And one of the things, you know, we did a whole thing on um, ceramic. That's a ceramic table, right, Sue? Let me know. Um, they have beautiful, beautiful ceramics in Santo Stefano da Camastra. You two need a couple of clones to keep up with all that you do. Hey, you We're know, having fun doing honestly, it. Honestly, live, the Sicilians live every life, every day as if it's their last day. Okay. That's what about our Hungarians? Hungarians as well. <laughs> and, you know, I'm going to be 71 years old in two weeks. Okay. I've lived a long and a hard life in terms of party. But a blessed. I've been, but a blessed. Right. I've been I've been if I've been a very hot party of my whole life. My whole life. Okay. I thank the Lord Jesus Christ every day for giving me continued health. Yeah. Continued health. So I made a deal with him years ago. I said, look it, I know I'm on extended time. I'm on extra play time. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm turning my life over to you. What do you want me to do? And every once in a while, he'll come in and throw a thunderbolt at me. <laughs> he will. And that's it. I do whatever he wants. And then Esther comes over here and she wants to do the program. I have fun with it. And she enjoys it because she's an artist. She brings you guys visuals that perhaps you wouldn't be able to well, see. Well, I'm a storyteller, honey. She's a tourist storyteller. And I just kind of fill in. That's all I do. All right. On that all note, right. make sure you hit the like button on this video. Share it with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe. And we will see you on another episode of You Sunday. Meet we'll see you Sunday. We'll be here Sunday. God bless you.